In this video, we're gonna do some soloing over My Funny Valentine. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial. This is a continuation of a solo that I wrote out for an entire chorus of My Funny Valentine. It is a jazz ballad, definitely a lot of fun to play and very helpful if you're looking to learn how to improve your improvisation skills. So we currently are at the third line and we're going basically four bars by four bars and now we're into like the ninth bar. And we finished off here where we went from the A flat major seven. So we're just basically going to continue right on with the line. So, so it's going from here. Okay, so there's a lot of standard bebop licks going on in there. So the first one that we're gonna tackle is this one where it's going. So that is the blues scale. And all we're doing is sliding up from the F sharp to the G. And you're accentuating that with a change in the chord in the left hand. Then this line I think is important. Really this is just heading up to the line that I'm talking about and really it's this line here. And what I wanted to point out from this is this is a C minor Dorian bebop scale. So I often refer to the bebop scale when I'm trying to perform a solo because it does have eight notes per scale versus seven. So the notes kind of land evenly. So in this case, the C minor Dorian bebop scale is this. So the only difference between the Dorian scale is you've got an E natural. So the E natural, which is here in the scale, is the bebop note kind of evening out the beats. So otherwise you'd have to do this. You'd have to hit the C twice in order to even things out. So that's why beboppers added those extra notes. They're just essentially passing notes. So let's take a look at that line. And then we're doing another sort of turn where we're heading to this note. So think of it like the troops are surrounding the building, the building being C, that's the note we're heading for and we're just basically doing passing notes to get there. Or or so there's a lot of ways to approach that, but that's the one that I chose here. So the bebop scale, and then you're just spelling the C minor chord here. So that's often something they'll do. Right, and you'll hear that throughout the solo. All right, let's move on to the next line. I hope you're getting something from this because this is really important when it comes to learning how to solo properly, getting these chords and scales together. So you remember we did this. And so that's really important because the left hand needs to step in every now and then and keep that jazz beat going, the swing going. So you've got the accent on the and of two. So the right hand is just landing on the D, right? So that's really cool. And now what we have is all in one bar, we've got basically a three, six, two, five, one of F minor. So if this is one minor seven, this is three, six, two, five. So the goal here, of course, is we're playing a ballad, but you can take these licks and apply them to faster swing. And the reason why we're doing it in ballad is because it's a lot easier to learn it slowly than it is to learn it quickly. But lines like that, 
again, we, we've talked about three, five, seven, and nine, spelling the chord, and then you're approaching it from a half step below. So, right? Things like that, very common. And then we're just spelling three, five, seven in flat nine of the D flat chord, or sorry, the D seven chord. So three, five, seven in flat nine. Oh, right. This is a B natural. And the reason why that is, is you've got a bebop scale going on here. So whether it's G minor seven Dorian bebop scale or C seven dominant bebop scale, they're the same scale. It's basically if you're starting on G minor, sorry, E natural. Or if you started on C, it's, so same scale, just starting on a different note. The passing note being the B natural. Okay, so. Or in this case, E flat, because we're going to the key of F minor, right? Okay, and then. So again, more bebop lines where you've got the. B flat seven dominant bebop scale, right? If this were B flat seven dominant bebop scale. So that's all we're doing. Playing the last four notes of the B flat seven bebop scale. And then we're doing a lick that often appears in jazz where you're starting off with the bebop scale, but instead of going down the scale, you're popping up to the ninth of the chord. And you've seen that before, right? Right, so the goal here is to, again, just put as many passing notes in there to make it sound musical. And sometimes if I do it or think of it, or just my fingers fall to it, you might put a little grace note there, which is simply an F sharp. So again, you're talking about the blues scale. Right? Okay, so from the beginning of the line. And we'll continue this tutorial in the next video. What I want to do now is play the entire solo for you to get you excited about learning it. Because again, we've just been really doing it piece by piece. And in the next video, we'll continue on with the next four bars. And I think it's important to analyze each of those four bars. So this entire tutorial series will be helpful to you because most people are looking to improve their improvisational skills. And there's a lot of theory and science that goes behind this and of course a lot of musicality. All right, let me play this solo for you in its entirety and then when I come back, I'll post a link to the sheet music.
Okay, there you have the entire solo. I'm gonna post a link now to the sheet music up here in the corner. You can go and download that and learn it. And please follow this tutorial series because again, there's a lot of information in here about how this solo came about and the thought process that went into creating it. So I hope this is helpful to you. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel as well, just hit the little bell when you do because you'll be notified of all of the upcoming videos that we are making. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you in the next tutorial.